Bloodhound is composed of three parts. The Neo4j graph database, the Sharphound data collector, and the Bloodhound UI. In this video, I'm going to show you how to download, install, and configure the Neo4j part of that, so the Neo4j database. So I'm going to start off with a fresh Windows 7 VM that has nothing installed on it. Neo4j requires Java to run. It runs on Java. So you need to have that installed at a bare minimum. I'm going to install some other things as well. And one of my favorite tools to use for this is Ninite. So go to ninite.com. So I'll do Chrome, Java 8, and Notepad++. Then click on Get Your Ninite. This will take you to another page where you can download and run the Ninite installer, which is going to download and install Chrome, Java, and Notepad++ for me. And it's going to skip any kind of bloatware or adware that the installers uh, want to add. We'll wait for this to finish up. Then close that and all that software is now installed and ready to use. So we'll open up Google Chrome, and first thing we're gonna do is download the uh, Bloodhound repo. So go to, get, go to github.com slash bloodhound ad slash bloodhound. And we're just gonna download the zip of this repo. So click on clone or download, and download zip. Once that finishes, we'll show in folder and then right click and do extract all. And instead of putting this into the downloads folder, I'm gonna put this onto my desktop. Hit extract and all the files will extract. Okay, so now we have our own copy of the, of the Bloodhound Git repo here. We're done with that stuff for now, um, but we're gonna come back to it after we get Neo4j running. Uh, you can also delete the zip uh, if you don't want to keep it around. So to download Neo4j, go to neo4j.com slash download. When you first get here, you're going to see a big green button that says, uh, or a big red button that says download, and this is for Neo4j desktop. I prefer to use Neo4j server, so go down and hit download Neo4j server. This will take you to a page where you can select the appropriate installer for your operating system. In this case, I'm doing Windows 64-bit, so I'll click on that. The download will automatically start. Again, we're going to extract the contents of this folder onto the desktop. So now we have, the, we have the files we need for Neo4j, now we need to install it. So we're going to run command um, in high integrity. So right click on CMD and do run as administrator. And then change directory to the Neo4j folder that you just extracted the contents of the zip file into. Uh, for me it's on my desktop, so I'll go to my desktop and then cd into the Neo4j folder, cd again into that Neo4j folder, and the contents of this folder include um, a bin directory, which is going to have the installer uh, that we want. In this case, the installer is a batch file uh, that will install Neo4j as a service. The command that you want to run here is neo4j.bat space install hyphen service. This will install Neo4j as a service. Now you have the ability to do net start, net stop. You can run it, you can operate it just like any other Windows service. So do net start Neo4j to start Neo4j. Then to verify that it's running, we're going to go back into Chrome and we'll go to localhost on port 7474. And that should bring up the Neo4j web console. So now that we know that Neo4j is running correctly, we want to explore the data in the example Bloodhound database. So the first thing you want to do is stop 
Neo4j using nest.neo4j. Then we're going to copy the Bloodhound example graph database folder into the Neo4j databases folder. So for me, I put all this stuff on the desktop. So go into the Bloodhound master folder on the desktop and find the Bloodhound example db.graphdb. Copy this folder and then go in back into the Neo4j directory. Within the Neo4j directory is a folder called data. Go into the data folder, then go into databases. This is where the databases for Neo4j live. And then paste the Bloodhound example graph database there. Now you need to point Neo4j at the Bloodhound example database. Go back to the Neo4j folder, find the conf directory, and then edit neo4j.conf. In this file, there are two lines that you have to uncomment and one you have to change. So the line you uncomment and change first is dbms.active underscore database equals graph db. Take the pound sign at the front of that line out that uncomments it. Then change the name of the database that Neo4j is going to load to bloodhound example db.graphdb. Then uncomment this line right here on line 29 that says dbms.allow upgrade equals true. And this just means that Neo4j will automatically upgrade uh, a database that was built with an older version of Neo4j. Start up Neo4j again with net start Neo4j. We'll give Neo4j a chance to start up and then we will refresh this page, uh, the local host on port 7474 page. We can verify we're, co we're connected to the database by doing colon server space connect. Say we see that we are connected as the user Neo4j. Click on this tab right here that brings up the database information, and you can see the node labels and the edge types, uh, which lets you know what kind of nodes and edges you have in that database. You can also see the database schema with the colon schema command. That'll show you the indexes and the constraints that you currently have in this database. And finally, one thing you can do to verify you have all the data is get a count of how many nodes are in the database. And the command for that is match in, in within parentheses, return count in, again, in in parentheses. This will just tell you how many nodes are in that database. And in the Bloodhound example database, there are 810, uh, the current version of the example database. So the last thing that I wanna show you is how to create your own graph database so you can use this on client engagements um, or your own internal assessments and you don't have to overwrite any data. So the first uh, step of that process is to make sure that Neo4j is not running and you want to create a new folder within the databases folder um, in the Neo4j directory. So go to Neo4j data databases. Create a new folder in this directory and uh, the name is up to you. We'll just call it client name dot db. And that's just a normal Windows folder. It's going to be completely empty to start off with. Now point Neo4j at that folder by editing the neo4j.conf file and change dbms.activedatabase dbms database to client name dot db. Save this file. And like I was saying, uh, that folder is completely empty right now. Um, once you start Neo4j though, it's gonna populate that folder with all the files that it needs to use the folder as a graph. So we'll start Neo4j, give that a second to run. Then if we check out that client name.db folder again, um, you can see that it actually has um, all these files in it now uh, that, um, that, that Neo4j needs uh, in order to, uh, to operate correctly. So yeah, that's it. That's how you download, install, and configure Neo4j. At this point now, you'd be ready to do your SharpHound data collection and take the CSVs that SharpHound puts out and use the Bloodhound UI to put that data directly into the Neo4j graph database. If you have any questions, hit us up on the Bloodhound Slack, um, email us, hit us up on Twitter. All the links are in the description of this video. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.